Hey everybody, welcome to the iPad mini announcement. Apple's holding their uh, their iPad mini announcement right now as we speak. They're getting ready to start the event, uh, anticipated event. A lot of rumors about this event over the last couple of years. Uh, is it happening? Is it not happening? Steve Jobs uh, said at, at one point that nobody wants a 7-inch tablet. But it's all changing today as uh, we do the coverage. Uh, we're going to have a live stream. We're going to cut into the live stream while we're doing this. But uh, for people just tuning in, I'm Andrew Zarian. You can follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarian. And I'm joined by my panel of experts. You guys are experts. Sweet. Uh, Suncast is here with us. How are you doing, Suncast? I'm doing all right. How you about yourself? You can follow Suncast on Twitter at Suncast. Also, for the first time during our live coverage, Combs at Culmination on Twitter. How are you doing, Colm? I'm doing great. I These are my favorite days when it's an Apple event. It's Everything stops in my life. Right? Everything does stop. Uh, yes. Very excited. So what are you looking forward to? I'm going to go to you first because this is your first time on. What are you looking forward to uh, this announcement? Are you looking forward to, this, to the iPad mini? Are you looking forward to uh, the potential other announcements that are happening? You know what? I am looking forward, I would say, to the iPad mini because I just want to see how they're going to handle the seven inch market because it's so hot right now with the the kindle fire hd and and the nexus 7 so that is what i'm really looking forward to how about you uh suncast of course the ipad mini and one of the things that i'm really interested in is the pricing that they're going to do with this because as everybody knows this year they kind of raised the prices on the ipod touched from 199 to 299 so where does that leave pricing for the ipad mini yeah, that's exactly what it is. Uh, Tim Cook is on stage, so let's cut into Tim Cook for a couple minutes. And I'd like to get started with a few updates beginning with iPhone. iPhone 5 is off to a tremendous start. Customers love the stunning new design, the beautiful 4-inch retina display, and the super fast A6 chip. We sold out the first weekend selling more than 5 million units. This was fantastic. This is the most iPhones ever sold in the opening weekend and the most phones ever sold in an opening weekend. The excitement was incredible. Customers could not wait to get their hands on the new iPhone. And of course, there is no better place to do that than in one of our amazing retail stores. To give you an idea of the kind of excitement we saw at the launch, we made a brief video, and I'd love to run it for you this morning. So uh, here's a promotional video that they're going to be doing. Uh, nothing groundbreaking, obviously. They're going to talk about how much it's sold, how well it's sold. Uh, I actually, I'm, I'm not purchasing the iPhone 5. Um, as people that watch my show know, we uh, try to cover everything. I try to get every kind of device possible. If I'm discussing it, I kind of want to experience it so I know what I'm talking about. I have an Android device. I have an iPod <laughs> Touch. I have an iPad. My wife has an iPhone. So I'm already engulfed in the iOS experience, even if I'm not using it day to day. But I'm kind of skipping this one. Um, I, I don't sense an urge of, wow, I have to get it. I know for a lot of people, if you had the iPhone 4 or you had a 3GS... Yeah, it's there. You want to get this device. But for me, it wasn't a main thing to get. I know, Colm, you got it, right? Yes, I have it right here. How do you uh, like it? I'd have to say, when it originally got announced, I was not one of the people that actually pre-ordered it. Um, I waited to see what people were saying. And, and having the 4S, I heard a lot of people saying, well, if you have a 4S, you don't need it. But now, after having it, I guess, almost a month now, I have to say it is the best cell phone I've ever had. The The thing that really makes it for me is the camera definitely, even though it's slightly better, is definitely worth it. And the LTE speeds are just outstanding. I'm using now LTE in my house rather than using Wi-Fi. But uh, really? I, you told me you're running through, you run, I mean, you blow by the the LTE every month, right? Yeah, but I have the, I have luckily have the... Uh, grandfather plan so i just get that text message oh uh, that tells you you're, you're over the the limit right uh i know so i guess you're going to be getting one um i'd like to get one yeah um and i think it's it's interesting because you say you're not going to get one but at the same time i think because you have a galaxy s3 that it's not nearly as important as somebody who might be a little bit further behind in terms of what they actually carry around with them like myself i have a pretty old and crappy blackberry so 
upgrading to an iPhone 5 definitely makes a lot of sense for me. Yeah, uh, for a lot of people, it does. I, I think it's a great device. I think it's a phenomenal phone. Um, and, of course, they're going to sell a ton of them. But it, it's interesting how Apple is playing these things out and the way that they're releasing these devices now because you're seeing a shift in the Apple pricing and the, uh, the way that Apple announces things. They announced the iPhone 5. People thought we would also get an I iPad mini announced, but we did not get it. Uh, they, they concentrate a lot on iTunes for whatever reason. But regardless, uh, you got a new iPod Touch, which is priced in a very bizarre price point. Yeah. Uh, they priced it at two ninety nine, and it's it's a little weird that it's that high. You, you've totally eliminated the one ninety nine entry level, you know, iPod Touch device. Uh, actually, Tim Cook is discussing the iPod Touch, so why don't we uh, tune into that? These are off to a fantastic start. The reception has been. We're talking about the uh, iPod Here's what Touches. The yeah. Had to say. This year's iPod Touch is the best one ever. I mean, sure, of course it is. It's really a device <laughs> without competition. No, the one two years ago. No, the, 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 the first one is the best one. I'm pleased to tell you that together with the rest of the new iPod lineup, we've already sold over 3 million units. God. We're really happy to be shipping the new iPods in time for the holiday season. We think they're going to make incredible. I do kind of wonder how much more they would sell if it was still at that now, 199 price. A lot, a lot of them. Are powered six million. IOS a lot of them. They, I mean, they would be selling a lot of them. And it's bizarre to me because that is the entry level Mac, uh, Apple device that you get. If you want to get iOS, you know that's how you start off. Most people get their kids for every Christmas or whatever birthday. They get an iPod Touch because it's 199. It's it's still in the price point that many people can meet. And that gets you in the iOS experience. That is totally eliminated now because it's two ninety nine for three hundred dollars. Wow. Who's going to go and buy that device? I think they're going to have a serious problem when the holiday season kicks in. Some of the rumors were that they might actually drop the price. Uh, I don't see them doing I, it, considering it was, I don't it see was them a new doing that either. But it'd be great. It would be great if they did, but I don't see that that happening. Now, where does this where does this put the iPod uh, iPad Mini? Because if you have the iPod Touch at two ninety nine, which is three hundred dollars, three forty nine, three ninety nine, yeah. I think it has to be three forty nine, which is sad to say because I really think that it needs to hit that one ninety nine so it can compete with those other seven inch tablets. Yeah, if it's three forty nine, it could still compete. If it's three ninety nine, I cannot justify buying it for three ninety nine. It's the argument is well, it's mobile now. That that's what some people are arguing. Well, it's three ninety nine, but you could put it in your purse. Well, yeah. I I don't. I, I, that's a bizarre argument to me. I think this device should have been 199. If they could have made the iPod Touch, uh, iP iPad Mini, I should say, it would have been 299. And I think this is the way that they've justified it. Where that's 299. Now this will probably be 349 or 399 starting, and it goes up beyond that. That's the only way that they could play this out. I don't know, Suncast. What do you think? Do you think it's possible it's that we can see a lower price point? Because we saw rumors that it was two forty nine and two ninety nine. Uh, we saw some some spec sheets released a couple of weeks ago. What do you think of that? Uh, this is this is kind of what I was saying in the beginning is, is that just the whole pricing that they've rolled out now is really interesting because I mean, of course Apple commands sort of a premium price for their products, so people are a little bit more willing to pay more for Apple products simply because they are Apple, but at the same time, um, just the way that they've raised the prices on some of these things, and I guess a lot of it is due to the retina displays that they put on devices now having to cost more just in order to do retina, but at the same time, I don't know, it just, I'm, I'm a cheap guy. I don't like paying a lot of money for stuff. <laughs> but I mean, you would justify paying you know, $199 for the device, but not $299. Yeah, I mean, that's another $100. That's and, another and $100, yeah. I think that's the problem. Uh, they're just going through some information. 160 million Game Center accounts. 28,000 iMessages sent every second. Wow. Uh, they're talking about the shared photo stream. So the typical Apple stuff. Yeah, they were the just event. talking about um, iOS 6 being on 200 million devices, which is, I think, uh, I read an article saying how that's about 61% of all iPhone devices out there right now. That, you know, that's I think amazing. It's incredible. Yeah, that's you know, incredible. But, but I think that 
I don't I think that number is legitimate just because this is the first time now that they have when you get an update on your phone, you see the little one by your settings. So like my parents and my in-laws will see that number and know they have to go to that app to do something. But before you would have to plug in and do all that. So I think that's why we're getting more people adopting it. Uh, what are Rich, you comparing by the way, that to Android uh, adoption for their newest operating system. As far as the pricing goes, Rich715 in our chat room. And by the way, guys, you could join our chat room by going to gfqlive.tv. You could change your nickname if you're in there from a GFQ viewer or whatever to uh, whatever you want by clicking on menu and change nickname. So it's kind of easy for me to read out loud what some of the messages are that are coming in there. He says, I think the largest storage iPad mini will be just about the same price as a low storage iPad. Oh. Yeah, but are we talking about the iPad 2 or the iPad 3 or the new iPad, I should say? There's a new iPad already? It's announced? <laughs> the new iPad. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how they're going to do that. How are they going to position that? I, I think they're going to eliminate the iPad 2 from the market. There's no reason. If there's an iPad mini on the market, there's no reason to have a second, an older generation iPad on the market. True. That it, It's kind of there to fit that $399 price point. But if this is going to be $349 and that's $399, it, it doesn't justify it to me. Holy crap, that's a lot of zeros on that. Do you see that? Uh, the check developer. to developers. Yeah. I want that check. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the check right there. Wow. Oh, There's here we go. seven this zeros on now. that. This is going to be, they said this was going to be a huge thing about iBooks 3.0. So uh, let, let's uh, tap into the feed. Yeah. Now, one of the most popular apps on the store is iBooks. iBooks, of course, makes it a pleasure to read on any of your iOS devices. It includes an elegant bookshelf where you can put literally hundreds of books and carry them with you anywhere you go. And just one tap and the bookshelf flips to reveal the iBook store where you'll find bestsellers, gorgeous full color picture books and multi-touch books. We now have over a million and a half books on the bookstore. And these, these cover every kind of subject you could ever think of. Customers have now downloaded 400 million of them since the inception of the store. If you open one of the books, you'll find gorgeous pages. And iBooks includes reading options like this beautiful sepia thing or this night thing. He's talking about really just easy black and white. Is he saying, is he saying black and white? Yeah. And today, <laughs> we're announcing a new version oh, of iBooks. Here we go. And this contains a really cool new reading option with continuous scrolling. So if you just flick when you're reading the word scroll by, just as you would expect. The new understand. version of iBooks is also yeah, better confused, integrated sir. with iCloud. So all of your purchased books show up on your bookshelf and you can tap one and begin reading just where you left off. There's also some fantastic new ways to share. You can just tap on your favorite quote and share it with anyone on Facebook or Twitter. This is really cool. We also have, we're also supporting over 40 languages, like this one from, this, this one in Korean. Notice the crisp, beautiful fonts that are available in iOS 6, and Chinese. Look at the beautiful vertical print. I mean, the Chinese market is a huge market and for Japanese. Apple. Japanese. The pages turn left to I right. I mean, we're talking about font right just now. Just like you would expect. If you're Japanese, that is. So I just wish they would. The do new version like of iBooks is available where you can basically today. Basically, read a book and then pick it up and listen to it if you're in the car, and then come back and finish reading it. That's more impressive to me, I think. Now I'd like to talk about the Mac. We've so this is the uh, the big announcement that we're expecting with the Mac. They're saying the that uh, we're going to get a Retina display, 13-inch Mac MacBook Pro. We're also going to get a new iMac, uh, uh, possibly a new iMac, and a Mac Mini. In fact, the Mac has been outgrowing the PC market for the last six years straight. And a key reason for this 
is the Mac is consistently named number one in customer satisfaction and reliability. And this is pretty much by all of the entities that rank this sort of thing. And this has led to the Mac being the number one desktop in the US and the number one notebook in the US. This is absolutely incredible. There's a, um, I don't know how they got those facts, by the way. Yeah, that seems a little weird. Yeah. The audience seems to be There's a weird delay with the audio you know, as we're well. We're really pleased with all of the momentum with the Mac. But we are not standing still. Oh. We're going to continue innovating with the Mac. And nope. There goes the, uh, the audio. Here comes Phil Schiller. Bill? They're having some issues. So that one surprised me with how many people want to watch yeah, this. I mean, there's a lot of people watching it. So Phil Schiller is on stage. They're applauding, obviously. They're uh, very excited for Phil Schiller to be on stage. Now, if they do announce new IMAX or new uh, uh, MacBook Pros, do you think we're going to get the same body design that we've had, or are they going to try to do something totally different here? Uh, no, they're going to keep they're going to keep the Retina body style. Okay. Meaning they're going to take they're going to make it thinner, and they're going to take out the optical drive and the smaller hard drive. I think the hard drive options are going to be one twenty eight. Here comes the announcement for the uh, thirteen inch MacBook Pro with Retina. Yeah, the uh, the stream is down for me. I don't know about you. Yeah, I mean, they're talking about the uh, MacBook right now, and he says, you might you might not know that our best-selling notebook is a 13-inch MacBook Pro. Housed in the best yeah, they said that? Design we have ever made. Yeah. But you might not know that our number one selling notebook is actually the 13-inch MacBook Pro. See? Fact, By the way, the display on the 13-inch MacBook Pro is a lower-resolution display than on the MacBook Air. Power. Really? Yeah. Small size. Awful resolution display. For so many uses. It truly is a great computer. So in typical Apple fashion, we're going to take our best product and we're going to introduce something so much better. Brand new 13-inch so MacBook cooler, Pro. more capable. And I'm really excited to show you for the first time the brand new 13-inch MacBook Pro. Here we go. Same form factor as the 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro. I'm curious if they're going to keep the previous version is still on the market. Incredibly thin, just 0.75 inches thin. Let's put that side by side with the previous generation. Wow. And see, yeah, much there's thinner. a huge difference. It's 20% thinner, a full one fifth thinner. But even more impressive, it weighs just over three and a half pounds. That's pretty light. That's almost a full pound lighter than the previous generation. Oh. It also makes it our lightest MacBook Pro ever. And here it is on the side. Look how so it looks like is. same two oh, thunderbolts there. It's lighter than the previous display. generation. And all the Hopefully it's also just makes the lightest MacBook it is? Pro wow. ever. And here it is on the side. I don't know where that's Look how coming thin from. that is. Yeah. Beautiful thin base. Look at it. Thin display. Thank you. And all the I.O. our pro customers need. On the left-hand side, there's MagSafe 2. Two Thunderbolt ports. HDMI a USB still. Port, so it's the same port, exact ports as the 50. This is identical to the... It does not have an optical drive, though. No. I had to, uh, the feeds got crossed with uh, Ustream right there. So uh, let me bring back the audio feed. It doesn't have HDMI, you said? I see. Make safe two Thunderbolt USB 3. Yeah. Um, something else and dual mics. Yeah, Headphone. That's 4 million 96,000 pixels. Good Lord. So that the screen resolution the is. Bigger Second screen resolution than my 27-inch iMac. Computer. What's the screen res? Two twenty-six sixty 2660 by 1400, I believe. Is that what it said? I it's a very high-res display. The yeah. world's second highest resolution yes, notebook display. Is the first. Wow. But think about that. This 13-inch notebook has more pixels than any competitive 15 or even 17-inch notebook. It is amazing. Looked at another way. Many of us have HDTVs now. Yeah, 2560. 1920 by 1080. And here is the new 13-inch 
Wow. Prolong, so wow. Showing the same image, but let's overlap those images. You can see the 13 inch MacBook Pro's Retina display displays almost twice as many pixels, almost 2 million more pixels than an HDTV. It is a stunning display. In Very many other ways as well. It has rich color. It has 300 nits, glass, whatever that means. 29% higher contrast ratio. And customers really appreciate this a 75% reduction in reflection or glare. It's an IPS panel, so it has a very wide viewing angle. And up to full brightness, it's 300 nits, a very bright display. So this is an amazing display. Yeah, that's a great display. And your applications look fantastic on it. So reading email, the text is so beautiful, you can't see the pixels. Surfing the web can be like a fine print magazine. <laughs> Using iWork applications like Keynote, your slides look absolutely gorgeous. My life applications are great too. When you use iMovie, the small thumbnails of video are even stunning and sharp. And spe especially pro applications like our Aperture Photo application for pros. You now have I mean, this is pretty much the same exact thing that they said for native with the 15-inch uh, release. Never been yeah. a small I mean, it's nearly identical to that. Photographers, this kind of technology and capability. And if you're looking for more apps that all support our new Retina displays. Just go to our Mac App Store. You're going to find plenty more there now. Yeah, I mean, I can see myself buying a Retina Display like Mac. Evernote and OmniGraffle. I could see There's myself buying one in about like an hour. Pixelmator and Sketchbook Pro and even games like Civilization V and Real Racing 2. It's a lot of great software now to support the Retina Display. So that alone is an amazing new feature. All right, but how much, guys? What are we taking? Our, what, what's the bet? There's a lot more. There's I would say $16.99, $18.99, dual microphones, Suncast, Stereo speakers Bob, I'll take $17.99. Better, $17.99. No, I, I said $17.99. It's a beautiful back no, keyboard and a glass and multi-touch trackpad. No, I say, okay, $18.99, this computer is actually. You know what? You I'm going to go with $1. So let's take the bottom off. <laughs> And get a deep look inside it. It looks and like an angry face. The new it does. Pro has been it does. From scratch. That's great. First, the large dark areas look, look, around look the track the battery. Pad, those are the batteries. We use asymmetric lithium ion battery technology. This allows us to get the maximum battery life out of such Eight a small Eight gigs design. of RAM. Nice. Same as the other ones. Same graphics card. It's pretty incredible. You have Intel. I don't core, believe. I believe the 15 i7 only get an i7 in it. The 15 inch. Graphics, yeah, this has an i7 too. Graphics. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, standard eight gigabytes of memory, up to 768 gigabytes of flash. It's all flash-based for storage. And of course, now up to seven hours of battery life in such a thin, light product. It is a fantastic computer. I love the way that and looks. it ships with OS X Mountain Lion, and Mountain Lion has many great That's features great. that take advantage of this technology and are perfect yeah, they're going, for notebook users. They're talking way too so long for example, about this. Built-in voice dictation. So okay, which type, everybody has. Also speak, and with dual microphones, that works even better. And of course, over Wi-Fi, we have AirPlay. So if you have Apple TV hooked up to your TV set, you can put your photos, your movies, your presentations up there for everyone to see. Documents right. in the cloud, so you can work like on your iWork documents in your MacBook yeah. Pro and access them wherever you are in your iPad or even uh, your Rich iPhone. says we in go. our chat room. The coolest feature, PowerNap. Hold with PowerNap, while your notebook is asleep, it can automatically update your contacts, your calendar, your email, your photo stream. So Michael is telling me that the 15 inches of quad core, this time might capsule. be a dual core. So this is a great new MacBook Pro. And it starts Here we go. with a 2.5 gigahertz dual core i5. Yeah! Of memory, You're right. 28 gigabytes of flash for just $16.99. But remember, that's an i5. So, right, that's one point. Uh, so the i5 version of this MacBook 13-inch Retina display begins, starts at 16.99. With Retina display has been a big hit, and this is $500 less expensive. Today, so that's impressive. Really appreciate that. So you could order it today. Start shipping today. Let's go. And like all of our products, the team works very, very hard on Here making these this. environmentally friendly. So we have a checklist, and I like to show that. With uh, I don't care about the uh, <laughs> environmental <laughs> nonsense that they're pushing with this thing. So sixteen ninety nine, guys, but it's an i5. It's not an i7. Right. They totally eliminated the uh, quad two. The uh, what is it? The, the the core two duo that they had in previous versions. So well, I would have hoped so. Yeah, thank God. Uh, but begins with it's an i5 for sixteen ninety nine, not an i7. 
1699 so you're probably looking at upwards of two thousand dollars to get uh, a little bit more storage and an i7 correct what do you guys make of that price i mean that that's a pretty high price point well it's also all ssd so it is all ssd but yeah you, you also have to remember the pro line kind of became the entry model mac for for about a year uh, they totally eliminated the original macbook uh, replaced it with the Air. The MacBook Air is the entry-level Mac now, and this is, again, the Pro model, so that's how they're justifying it, saying, hey, listen, if you want the Pro, you're going to pay a higher cost. Yeah, I mean, they're showing uh, some other models now. The MacBook Air for $999, the MacBook Pro for $1199, and a new MacBook Pro with Retina Display is $1699. Right, here we go. It's powerful and super thin and light. Oh, they are keeping the customers it. are really going to like it. That. And here's our notebook lineup. We have MacBook Air starting at $999. For those who still want it, we keep the old generation there. MacBook Pro at $1199. And the new MacBook Pros with their Retina Where's your entry level? $1699. Yeah. Of course, well, you know there are multiple screen sizes on each wow. and a few configurations. So if you're curious, here are the standard channel configurations. I mean, why still call it the MacBook Four. Pro? You know, that, that's the issue that I have with this. Yeah, just call it the MacBook. Just call it the MacBook. So it's going to be $2,000 for the higher-end MacBook Pro. See, for me, I think then this makes up my mind. I think I'm going to go with the 15-inch that's just $200 more. Really? Yeah. So now we're talking about the Mac Mini. Uh, rumors that they were changing this also. So uh, here we go. Oh, I missed this great joke. The Mac Mini is our smallest, most affordable Mac. USB 3s. If you haven't looked at one lately, it's packed with a lot of great features. Gigabit Ethernet, FireWire 800, HDMI Video Out, Thunderbolt, USB, now upgraded to USB 3, four of them, SD card reader, and audio in and out. But the action on this product and the update is on the inside, so let's turn it over. And it's very accessible. You just take the bottom cover right off, and here's the inside. It's a beautiful, simple, small design. What's inside? Dual or quad Intel Core i5 or i7 Ivy Bridge processors. Oh. Intel HD graphics, 4000. a good chip. Yeah. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, up to 16 gigabytes of memory, and up to a terabyte hard drive or 256 gigs of flash. There are a number of configurations. It starts with a 2.5 gigahertz dual-core i5, four gigs of memory, and a half a terabyte hard drive. Yeah, I think it should be 499. 599. Uh, there are other configurations, and a lot of our customers actually like to get it as a server to run OS X applications for server uses. And so we have a 2.3 gigahertz quad core i7. Holy crap. Four gigs of memory and two one terabyte hard drives. You know, and OS 10 bad. server applications yeah. preloaded. I mean, you're paying for the form factor, obviously, for this device. Start shipping today. I mean, it's yeah, not bad, a thousand bucks, but you're paying for the size. You're paying for the form factor of this device. Right. Instead of having a big, bulky, you know, machine, you're getting this tiny little box. Uh, Again, with the energy efficient stuff. So, uh, <laughs> Colm, have you have you uh, placed the order? Hold on one second. Three, eight. Yes. Uh, no, I will be probably purchasing it. I'm not, I'm not sure. Should I go to the store and see the hype or should I uh, actually order online? It uh, says here, available today. By the way, uh, some iMac announcements also. You heard. It's actually really? the number one desktop That's model it. in the U.S. And for good reason. It is a great design. You know, I'm happy that they're not fact, doing that. In fact, many think of it as the flagship of the Mac product line. You may remember it all started back in 1998. You love that computer, didn't I you? Hate it. I never had it. Blue iMac. In fact, this really, really launched it. all of our products. The way we make products, how they innovative sold a lot they of are, these. how incredible the designs are. And it also epitomizes well, they're changing the design. So well to create they're setting it up. A breakthrough innovative product. And then that one in the middle the years, was my favorite. Relentlessly the Pixar one. Keep yeah, that one was cool. With the latest technology to push it as far as the technology allows. Let's We've see. had seven generations of iMac. Wow. Each one better than the last. So that's why it's so great today for you to be the first to see oh my God. the next generation of iMac. <gasps> oh my God, I'm getting chill bumps. <laughs> You're so excited. Oh my God! Look, it's just a line. There's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Look at that. Wow, that's really thin. <laughs> wow. I want it. That's really thin. I want it. It is absolutely beautiful. 
know how environmentally great that is. Yeah, very thin uh, new iMac. Really nice. They have one there that they're going to show off. Oh, there, okay. Side, edge to edge glass, that amazingly thin edge. Would you like to see one in person? <gasps> You're so, so excited, Cole. We have one right here. Because <laughs> I love the iMac. I think we need to get calm a bib this for the drill coming the off his mouth. IMAC. It's nice, it Mac. Absolutely incredible. The most beautiful Mac we have look ever made. Look how thin that is. If you want to get a look That's kind of cool. I'll admit that. That's kind of cool. <laughs> just a little bit. Look oh. at him. Look at him rub it down. Look at that edge. <laughs> ah, well, you know what? It's <laughs> they, they, that design is. That does not look like the 27 inch, though. I want to note that is definitely a 21. There's an entire computer in here. It's hard to believe there's even just a display in here. It's got a lot. Wait a minute, does that like look like MacBook Air, where it's kind of like a bubble effect? Can I ask you? Didn't does the Mac logo look a little different on the back? I didn't get to All see right, it. Let me tell you a lot more about it. Five millimeters is the edge. edge Holy cow! Five millimeters thin. That is eighty percent thinner oh my than God. the previous generation. Yeah, it's really thin. And it extends the entire length, all the way down to this area at the bottom. We we lovingly call this the. It's a not, it's a beautiful looking display. Uh, stream is uh, acting up, but really, really nice display. Coma, you, you might want to get this one. Fine, let's let's get it. Some advanced laser welding, but this is so thin. We wanted to do something even more incredible. What is the friction stir welding? Technology. You may not have heard of it. Called friction stir welding. Here we go. This is unbelievable. The actual molecules of the aluminum emerge <laughs> together between the two components to make one piece. That are super strong. It sounds like magic. Seamless. Sounds like uh, ultrasound welding. Create <laughs> yeah. These products is astounding. Look at the old one but compared how did to we make it. That oh, way. it has no CD ROM drive. Well, it, no optical now. No SD card reader. That's not good. Isn't I it love it. amazing how something card new reader. makes the previous thing instantly look old? It's incredible. <laughs> well, let's look inside and take it apart a bit. They're the showing, you know, what made it bigger. Engineer an entirely new display that's five millimeters thinner. That's a huge difference. Are they going to be on Johnny Ives? Look closely at the previous what? generation. Dang, There's a very thin air gap between done. the display and the front glass. A two millimeter air gap. But we've removed that as well by laminating the display directly to the glass. This was a huge challenge. That's exactly we what they did with the, uh, the iPhone yeah. in previous yeah. generations, yeah. where, you know, like the first two but generations, it was actually like uh, like the original iPods, you know? Um, and then they changed to this whole laminated, laminated process. Wait, they said they moved the optical drive, so that means... It's amazingly thin. Oh, removed. So more about this display. The display comes in two so there sizes. There is a 27 inch. 21 and a half inch and 27 inch. The 27 inch is 2560 by 1440. The 21 and a half inch. All right, we're going to take bets on pricing on this. They're both IPS panels for a beautiful viewing angle and at full brightness over 300 nits. So beautifully bright. And we said that's fully laminated. Besides making it thin, the full lamination delivers another benefit. When you look at it, the text and graphics will look like they're sitting right on top of the glass because they're wow. right that close, and it improves the optical quality. And then mm -hmm. we also apply an anti-reflective coating to the display, but we wanted to make it even purer, even thinner, even higher quality image, image quality, and we use a new technology for us called plasma deposition. So what does that mean, not today, retina? I heard about plasma deposition. It allows us no, to apply it, they're not gonna do the anti-reflective coating down to a nanometer thickness. And the combination of all this hard work is really simple. Customers are going to appreciate that it's 75% less reflection than the previous generation. It's actually really good. That's a really big deal. Yeah, it is. And to top it off, these displays are beautiful. They're each individually calibrated on the manufacturing line with a spectral radiometer. It is very, very cool. Pricing, come on. Calibration is important, features, though. Yeah. There's a FaceTime HD camera for 720p, dual microphones, and stereo, a stereo sound system that sounds even better than the previous generation, Please. which is so hard to achieve because this has 40% less volume than the previous generation. It also sheds up to eight pounds. So wait, is the that the SD generation. card reader there on the back? Pretty remarkable. Let's see, yeah. And That's again, like the MacBook Pro, so much work has gone on on the inside. That I'm very happy to show you what that looks like. That's a pretty There's inside. There's a serious computer inside this thin design. 
Here's some of the elements of it. Intel quad-core i5 or i7 Ivy Bridge processors, NVIDIA discrete Kepler graphics, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. You can have either up to 768 gigabytes of flash or up to three terabyte it's hard drive. It's basically a glorified and up to notebook. 32 gigabytes of memory. That's twice as much as before. So much work has gone into fitting go. all of that inside a computer, this thing. Wow. Turns out. Oh, there goes the audio once again. So the difference is the SD card's in the back, and now it's USB 3.0s as opposed to mine. That's kind of are beautiful. weird having it in the back of my opinion. Four times faster yeah, than key tasks. Except it, I, you know how many times well, I've dropped my SD well card in the we just discussed, drive? We have a new third option. <laughs> oh, third option. If it want, if it'll work. Something called a fusion drive. It's uh, it's a hybrid. Apple fusion drive. Yeah, it's a hybrid. What's the fusion drive? Well, first. It has a money it's logo. I'm in. Gigabytes of flash storage. I'm in. And added to that, just because of the logo. The choice either yeah. one or three terabyte hard drive. And in software, they're fused together into one logical. I don't volume. like that. I don't like these hybrid do hard so drives. They usually fail, right? Isn't that what's going on? Can. But best of all, it's built into OS X Mountain Lion. So it's automatic. There's nothing to set up, nothing to manage, nothing to do. It just works. So just how works. does it work? Well, when you order your iMac, if you choose the fusion drive, you get it, and there's one drive made up of both flash and the hard drive. Of course, the operating system entirely fits on that, on that flash. So we keep This it is something that I think we're going to start seeing fact, a little bit more of, because there's a lot of times where you, you want an flash. SSD to help improve you load loading of Windows or the operating and system and your applications. Computer, we'll then the you still need some, some way of having mass storage for your, 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 your data. Because like if you're doing what we do, we go through a lot of video yeah. stuff, and you still need to store that video. And because SSD technology is still relatively expensive compared to traditional hard drives, it, it just it doesn't make sense to go and spend all that money on a solid-state disk. So this is the, the, the way they're talking. Well, this is the same way for example, PC setup. One common task in Aperture is to import photos. If you use a hard drive, you get a certain speed. And Flash is over three and a half times faster at this task. So yeah. how does the Fusion Drive compare? Here's how it compares. You get near the performance of Flash with access to all of that storage without having to do anything else. Clap it up. I mean, I, I like how they, it, it's just a hybrid hard drive. Right. That's all it is. But it's something that a lot of people do now in yeah. a way where they, they actually order an SSD to load the operating system on yep. and run their applications, but then they also have the traditional hard drive to store everything else on. That's how I do my PC. My whole OS is on my Flash, and then all the games I play on it are on the hard drive. Here we go. For a great super drive that plugs into USB. <laughs> Buy that, terrible There's a 21 and a half inch Mac that starts at a 2.7 gigahertz quad core i5 8 gigs of memory, a GeForce GT 640M, that's a Kepler part, and a terabyte hard drive. For $12.99 for the device. 21.5-inch uh, device. How much is the old one? It's about the same, right? Yeah, I bought my 27-inch. Of course, you can, you can make other configurations if you'd like, and these start shipping next month in November. The 27-inch oh, iMac begins with a 2.9 gigahertz quad-core i5, 8 gigs of memory, GeForce GTX, 660M, a terabyte hard drive for $17.99. Not bad. Wow. And he starts shipping. Oh, it's an i5, though. He starts shipping about a month later in December. Oh, wow. And again, really like all of our computers, incredibly environmentally I don't want to hear that friendly. part. Environmentally, yeah, it, it, it's it's interesting how um, and on and on. I I wasn't We've expecting a new form factor for them. Even more energy efficient. Are we going to see a Mac Pro? That's a question a lot of people are asking us. Again, if you're watching Dead. this on JTV or UStream, you can go to our website gfqlive.tv. We have a chat room there. Kind of makes it easy for me to moderate the chat. You could also change your nickname in the chat by clicking on menu and change nickname. This is the Apple announcement. Uh, the iPad mini announcement, but we have seen an all-new Mac lineup, a 13-inch Mac Retina, MacBook Pro Retina, also brand-new iMacs. We're going to talk about the iPad next. And the iPad is coming up now. These products are really cool. Next, such a nerd. <laughs> I'd like to talk about iPad. 
Now, it oh. seems like each time we get together, there's a new number or a new statistic to illustrate. Here we go. Five billion iPads sold. This product. And today, I'm yeah, telling Rich, to tell you uh, it's very expensive to run into this Two weeks ago, we sold our 100th million iPad. <laughs> it's Lord. So 100 million iPads sold uh, as of this moment. That's 100 Phenomenal number. million in just two and a half years. Times that by this 500. This is unprecedented for go. a new product in a new category. Now, to put this in some perspective, we sold more iPads in the June quarter than any PC manufacturer wow. sold of their entire PC lineup. Now, this has attracted a fair amount of attention. <laughs> and it seems like every day there's another tablet shipping. Their feed is awful, and maybe this is why they don't. Yeah. iPad accounts for over 90% of the web traffic from tablets. What? And we know that That's this is the thing that people do most often on a so tablet. So what are people doing with their tablets? Nothing? <laughs> you might ask, so why is iPad so phenomenally successful? Well, name recognition. It turns out oh, yeah, sure. that there's they were the a first simple reason That's a good product. People love their iPads. Well, that, that's, that's, that's a great reason. <laughs> great reason, Tim. And we made a video about yeah, it. And we made a video <laughs> telling you why you love it so much. That's interesting, though. All, they're, they're seeing that the web traffic is all coming from... Responsiveness of iPads, hardware, and iPads. software working I don't know together. about 90%, but I would say it's they definitely front, around 80% or higher. 80, yeah, I would say 80. Time. Yeah. And the rear eyesight camera FaceTime that is takes huge great that, photos too. and great oh, HD video. Oh, God. Again, with the photos on this they thing. They love that they can connect anywhere they go using either Wi-Fi or cellular. They love iPad's legendary all -day You know what I don't line. love? It's the pricing. Yeah. <laughs> and they love... All of the amazing apps that I love what it does. I just don't love how much it cost me to help them work. Yeah, that's the play, thing. It's just like you imagine create, if they do this iPad mini at one ninety nine, how many they would sell? Like, oh, but yeah, crazy. But but, the but it's, it's so the cost rewarding. of these devices. Uh, that's it's true. so amazing to us. Whatever they're paying the people that are making them what five dollars a day. Right. Yeah, sure. They could they can make it for a little cheaper, right? Yeah, they're exploiting people to make these. Teachers labor. and students around the world have found iPad to be an incredible Look, Those kids right there are making it. Yeah, they're making it. <laughs> Here's an example of what we're hearing. This is from a superintendent of a school district in Texas. He says, the iPad has been a real game changer in education. Now, this is something, and no I don't know if I've talked about this with you, Andrew, is just that why don't they do something where educators can go and for like a huge price, they're able to offer students like for $200 an iPad. Like That's what they it. have to do. It. That's what they have to do, actually. It's not fair yeah. that someone, because their family doesn't make a certain amount of money, they can't have an iPad. And it, that's such a great tool for education. It drives me insane. We announced iBooks author. <laughs> Well, it's not it only that, but the fact that you're paying, you would expect niche, somebody to pay, you know, $600 for an iPad when it's going to be obsolete in two years, but they're going to a four-year right. program. Yeah. True. I agree with that, too. Well, I, I think that's the feature of this device. I think as far as uh, educators go and, and institutions go, they, they're definitely going to administer these throughout their entire right. school. And I, like Sunka said, they need to last like the time you're in college for, for four years. They need to last. The but technology US just does not last yeah. that long, no matter what you get. And these are rich, engaging textbooks on a variety of subjects from the science. I mean, you could get by to mathematics a lot longer history. with a laptop at six hundred dollars than you could with a tablet. You want to be a kid again. We iBooks textbooks. He forgot. I. I could you imagine if we had that growing up? Good lord. Yeah, I mean, it would have really changed. Encarta was what we had. Listen, we had Encarta.
And it's not just the large three publishers that are using this. That number's not impressive. Smaller publishers. When you hear the other 500. Yeah. I'm not flapping. Universities that. are using this to provide very engaging content. Now, today, we're announcing the latest version of iBooks Author. And it includes uh, some incredibly saying the new, new Apple templates. He really teased like us this there. One that's a portrait only template. Publishers can now take their own fonts and use them to provide a more custom look of no, their books. This is not true. They're, all the people that want to make books are going to have to go to a person like me and today, pay them lots of money to create these books for them. So it's, it's because that's what you do. Right. Rendered mathematical expressions you don't think some author could go and make some? No. There's no way an author can do the thing. I mean, I get tons of job asking, we need iBooks author. We need iBooks author because they want to get in that field. and No one can do it. Only sp people who are trained in it. It's not as easy as they try to make it seem. It's especially key in education where it's very important that students have access to the latest version of their textbooks. Book updates is pretty iBooks awesome. Author is available today as a free download and it's available. You can read a new chapter in uh, Fifty Shades of Grey on <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, in addition to education, iPad is taking the business market by storm. Okay. What do you have for in us? In the office, in the field. And in places you could never Wait a minute. dream Did of they just a show that the, she's show broadcasting her yes. news piece with an <laughs> iPad and a microphone connected to it? CTV, there it is. What an awful news station. <laughs> is now testing or deploying Is that even realistic? IPad. I don't even know. And we're seeing a similar success in smaller business. 94% of Fortune 500 companies, interesting. With 100 wow. million sold in just two and a half years, we couldn't be more thrilled with how quickly iPad has been embraced by so many users for so many different things. But we know we are just cutting boards. Door stops. Earlier this year, we announced an iPad with a beautiful retina display. And this iPad has gone on to be the fastest selling iPad of all time. Today we're going to make all you And the top selling it. tablet terrible. in the world. But we're not taking our foot off the gas. Right. We've got some really cool stuff to show you. And to do that, I'd like to invite Phil back up to the stage. Because I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Because I can only read off of them. I could only read off a prompter and can't remember any of this stuff. So uh, here's Phil Scheller that does this that does a better job than me. I just can't wait for the Johnny Ive video where he goes, Today I put something unbelievable. Here's Phil Thank Schiller. You. So just half a year ago we introduced the third generation iPad with its retina display. You notice and he's not calling remarkable. it the new iPad. Interesting. So that's why it's more incredible that we're sitting here today. The new, new iPad. Just over half a year <laughs> later to talk about the fourth generation iPad. What? Inter wow. It's amazing. The pace the team is at, the pedal of the metal. I'm a little surprised by this, guys. How about you? So I'm pissed. And this fourth fourth generation gen iPad. iPad. I should have locked in a price a for my house. iPad. So what's inside it? A new chip. The Apple A6X chip delivering okay. even faster performance. We were than already the so far ahead of the competition. This just. I this is very surprising, guys. For people just tuning in, <laughs> they have announced the fourth generation iPad, not just an iPad mini. We haven't heard anything about an iPad mini, but we're well, hearing about the fourth gen iPad. The they're talking the about the best Apple keynote ever for it. Let's be fair, they again. didn't show the in device addition, yet. No. We've added a new generation of Apple image signal processor for tasks like face recognition and image stabilization. So all of this power, two times CPU power, two times graphics power, new image processing, and it's energy efficient. The same 10 hours of battery life of the previous generation. Okay, battery uh, life is the same. We're also updating the FaceTime front side camera tail, FaceTime HD with 720p. Hey, hey, you. And the cellular version has LTE with Greatly expanded coverage. How angry are you? We're working with I'm many so carriers mad. around the world to support LTE. I don't have enough money for this today. On this new fourth generation iPad. 
Well, you better get to work. You know, and some new ones here to support go. iPad, like Sprint here in the U.S. Head right now and KDDI locking a price. In Japan. <laughs> We've also updated the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi wi performance. The Wi-Fi. Wi 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 twice as fast. <laughs> Wi-Fi is for everybody else. The Apple TV now releases the Wi-Fi. And, and is 2.4 and Very 5 cool. gigahertz. Wow, this is a... Uh, updated the connector to our latest connector. The Lightning, latest connector. okay. It's 80% smaller, all digital, reversible, and compatible with devices now being created for iPhone 5, iPod Touch, iPod Nano. We've added some new cables as well. Customers who want camera connections, we have the lightning point. to USB and lightning a, to an SD card reader. For it. video out, there's lightning to HDMI and lightning to VGA. And all of this technology Don't and performance, you want those giant dongles, of course, Andrew? based on a system. Here we go. Pricing. Retina display. Same pricing. There's nothing. That's the same size. The yeah, four ninety nine. Uh, so they're just talking about a fourth gen iPad, but they're they're kind of skipping iPhone over this for four ninety nine. So twice the performance. I mean, new features at the same price. I highly recommend everyone to use Deep Tech right now. And cellular as well, the same price, starting at six twenty nine. So if the third generation iPad was the best. They're going the over world. this pretty fast, though. Yeah. Just extends that so maybe mood. there is more. And it's all about helping customers to learn about this great new technology and find new ways to use it that they never dreamed of. Here we go. So what else can we do to help customers find even more uses for iPad, to use it in places they never imagined, Here we manners go. they never have before? There it is. <laughs> Woo! Look at it. Boy, I really want a Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 right now. Uh, that's the iPad Mini. Very surprised at the fourth gen announcement. And I think that's just a way to eliminate the thun uh, to add the Thunderbolt port ports. Thunderbolt ports to all of them. I just locked in $550 for my third is. gen right now. <laughs> this is iPad Mini. And And what can you do with an iPad mini that you can't already do with the amazing fourth generation iPad? Well, this, you can hold it in one hand. Now this just isn't a shrunken down iPad. It's an entirely new design with a beautiful aluminum and glass enclosure where every detail is finely crafted and made, just exquisite. And the process by which they're manufactured are at a level of tolerances unseen in our industry. There is nothing as amazing as this. This incredibly thin and beautiful iPad mini. Beautiful from every angle. Incredibly thin and light. Would you like to see one in person? Tell yes. me again how many times it's thin. 10% thinner. <laughs> this is iPad mini. Wow. It's, a, it's really, I mean, it's a gigantic iPod touch. It is. How thin that is. Amazing. Again with the thinness. Here, let me tell you a lot more about it. So this iPad mini is just 7.2 millimeters thin. That's about a quarter thinner than the fourth generation iPad. To put it in context, it's as thin as a pencil. That's thin. It weighs just 0.68 pounds. That's over 50% lighter than the previous iPad, fourth generation. So in context, what could you compare that to? It's as light as a pad of paper. We were gonna say a book, but books are much heavier. <laughs> so we came up with a pad of paper. It comes in black and white, the black the white and nice. silver, the black yeah. with a slate back. It's beautiful on both sides. I think one of the biggest questions people wonder is, what screen size did we pick and why? And the team worked really hard thinking. All right, so uh, locked up again. But what do you think of this? 7.9 inch thought the inch developers display. had to do any work. We wanted it to be smaller such that it could be thinner and lighter, as you can see. But not so small that it stops being incredibly usable, because the iPad is the most usable of all these devices. So let's look at it side by side. Here is the current iPad 2 next to the iPad mini. iPad 2, still talking about it. The iPad 2 is 9.7 inches on the diagonal. iPad mini 
7.9. So that's easy to remember, right? 9.7, 7.9. It's only 1024 by 768, even though, exactly so it's not retina the then. No. The original iPad, the iPad 2 are 1024 by 768, and the new iPad mini is 1024 by 768. That means all of the software created for iPad all works on the iPad mini. Yeah, I guess they had to do that. And it's great to use in both the portrait and landscape position, which our customers love to use it in both manners. So it's great for reading your email and responding to your email and surfing the web. It's great for managing all your photos and sharing them with friends and family. It's fantastic for kicking back and reading a magazine or a book on. It is amazing to sit there and hold it and do a FaceTime HD phone call on something so thin and light. It's great for all now that I do I see as being kind of cool. Keynote. Yeah. To have Ages, something that's about numbers. that size, but just super light, where you can just easily carry it around with you. How much? Garage band. I mean, it is so much fun to sit there and play. So wait, did they, did they say the inside is the same chip? And garage chip? band on no. this thin and light iPad. We haven't and all of those applications work wonderfully on it. So if you're a customer who likes to use Facebook all day long, you're going to love using Facebook on the new iPad. Some if you love guessed. creating content with applications <laughs> like Paper, an amazing drawing application, and love doing that on iPad Mini. If you love playing games, playing Real Racer. They love that game. Yeah, I don't know why, why they're experiencing incredible. these issues. This is the greatest keynote ever, I Real think. Real Racing 2 are incredible on the new iPad. In fact, I could sit there here and do 275,000 examples for you, and I would love to, but we don't have enough time. They work amazing on iPad Mini. No one else can say that with their tablets. In fact, others have tried to make tablets small on the iPad. And they failed miserably. These are not great experiences. I don't know about miserably. There we go. Let's see. Let me give you an example. So here we have nope. iPad Mini on the right. There's plenty of 10-inch tablets on the left. This is the latest, greatest, most favorite-reviewed new device. So let's compare them. Well, first, let's just look at the bezels around. I mean, the it can't be a fair comparison if the Ours, pricing isn't the same. The iPad Mini True. is made of aluminum. That's right. So if they're thin, comparing, so it better be 199 or they lose. Or something they're comparable. Made of plastic. Yeah. It's thicker. In fact, the entire product, that Android product, is thicker and heavier than iPad Mini, even though it has a smaller display. Now, that so I do think is, is something to point out diagonal, is that, I mean, when you are using inches, one of these things, you don't want you something that's going, to, going to be heavy. You want it to be as light as possible. Because like if you're carrying this thing around, I mean, like I have the original Kindle Fire right here. And this thing is a freaking brick. I hate using and carrying this thing around because it's yeah. just so heavy. The iPad, Mini. the iPad Mini is actually over a third larger display area, 35%. That's a huge difference. And it doesn't stop there. What's the number one I mean, thing people do on their iPads? It might be 199 I mean, well, if, if this thing is not comparable in price to this device, this is a useless comparison. And if it's 199 are you going to buy browsers. one? Oh, yeah, instantly. But you can see there's things around the browser. There's tabs. Android has some software controls on the bottom of the display. So let's remove all that noise and just look at the web pages. You can see a huge difference. The iPad mini, it's about 50% larger for surfing the web, holding your portrait orientation. That is a gigantic difference. This is interesting. Yet the iPad mini is thinner and lighter. As I said, many customers also like to use it in the landscape orientation. So let's turn them sideways. Let's remove all the noise around it. Here's your web pages. Yeah, I mean, that, 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 that is pretty. Yeah. But, I mean, it's yeah. a larger yeah. display. It's not, how can yeah. you compare right. it? It's, it's, it's a bigger display. And it doesn't stop there. It's, it's like comparing 4 by 3 aspect ratio to 16 by 9. We have yeah. these amazing applications for iPad users. It's not really We've a fair learned. comparison. We have over 700,000 applications that can run an iPad, but customers love the ones written for iPad, designed for that screen. Over 275,000 of them. It doesn't does seem to be widescreen, it's they not. They have phone applications stretched up, not tablet applications. So for example, if you like to hang with your friends and yeah, you have a great the price. experience on iPad mini, you get a scaled up phone experience on that other product. It's a big difference. Do you like to shop on eBay? A huge difference between what you can do on an iPad and on these other products. I mean, that's the app development Do you like to listen form. to music in Pandora? The differences are night and day. <laughs> do you like to go search for videos to watch in Vimeo? Yeah, but the, doesn't the 7 have a widget to play Pandora? Experience. So, do you like to plan your trip on TripAdvisor? 
an incredible experience on iPad mini? Well, you know, right? <laughs> so we could go on and on. So I mean, they're taking, they're taking big hits to Android and that's who they are competing with with this device. But Android has always kind of had inferior applications to sure. iOS. I agree with you on that. Great iPad. In fact, the technologies inside are equal to or better than the iPad 2 in every way. There's an amazing So here we go. So he keeps saying iPad 2. All right, here we let's see the specs. IPad. First, A5. It's an Apple A5 chip, a dual core A5 chip that has more than enough power to drive so an older incredible chip. mini display. It's fine. And give you great performance for all so your it's applications. So it's going to be 199. I don't know. It has a, a FaceTime chip now yes. better than what we had in iPad 2, a FaceTime HD front side camera. Okay, front side camera HD. An even bigger difference on the camera on the back. 5 megapixel five eyesight megapixel on the back. Eyesight camera. So it's so the you can iPhone take 4 camera. 5 megapixel photos okay. for 1080p HD video. Kind of wish they would have put an 8 megapixel camera in there though. The wireless is advanced greatly too. It has the it's same, the same LTE camera on the iPad touch. iPod touch. LTE, LTE on this device as well. We have the wow. faster Wi-Fi That's as well. Hot. 802.11abgnn. Uh, battery life, apparently 10-hour battery life. Lightning connector, so it's compatible wow. with the accessories being created for iPhone 5, the fourth generation iPad, iPod Touch, and iPod Nano. And all of this technology, all this incredible capability in such a thin and light device, the team has worked really hard to get you the same battery life. 10 Are we getting into price finally? Life, just like Let's the fourth see. generation iPad. So hopefully, I mean, they're really comparing it to, to the Nexus 7, which so is a 199 tablet. And uh, it's going to be very hard for them to turn around and say this is a $399 device if that's the comparison they're making. Oh, here's a stupid video. Created a video Here, Johnny Ive. More about oh, here he it. is. I'd like to play that now. This year's <laughs> device. Why is it when I hear him talk, I want to sleep with him? Is that weird? Yeah, it's a little weird. Yeah, that's yeah, definitely weird. Okay, I was just wondering. <laughs> I think we're going to have to do an intervention here. Remarkably simple to use. She could sell me anything. I mean, it's a pretty device. It really is. The white one looks uh, good. To me, it seems like they released the fourth generation iPod Touch. Just so they could, I'm sorry, the fourth generation we iPad, just so they could put the lightning bolt adapter on this thing. So There's really no improvements other than uh, a faster processor. It, you know, it, it does look good. I'm looking at the video here. Uh, they're putting a faster processor in there and a lightning bolt uh, adapter. And what, what was it? A uh, new camera. But nothing no, with it's graphics. A camera from the same one that's in the iPod touches right now. No, no, I'm talking about the I'm talking about the oh, uh, the, the fourth the fourth gen iPad. Right. They've updated oh, the that too. Fourth gen, yeah. But did the the body did not change on the fourth gen iPad? No, nothing is different. I mean, not that we know of. They they even they have not announced anything as well as far as the release date goes. True. Full ten hours of battery life, and it runs more than two hundred seventy five thousand apps made just for iPad. Oh, that's form factor. That's amazing. Phones. These are powerful apps that take full advantage. So does this mean they are officially in the seven inch market? Yeah, they're in a seven inch market, but at what cost? You have to remember this is a bigger device. So they're not really direct app also is going to cost more. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned on how they're going to price this. If they're comparing it to a hundred ninety nine dollar device, then how do you how do you justify that? It's well, then again, I mean, if you look at the, the, the iPad as it is now, I mean, it, it costs more than similar iPads out, and iPad still does better than everybody else. Yeah, but the iPad is, yeah, but when you compare it to a 10 inch, 10 inch Android device, a premium Android device, let's say, you're almost in the same price range. Doesn't Johnny Ive look like God in those pictures? Why do you love him so much? <laughs> in just reducing a product in size. Look at him. What we did. Was we went back to the All right, that's it. It's official. We're going to have to give, give you a lobotomy. A product that was a concentration of, <laughs> Is he a sufferer? A reduction of the original. He might be. <laughs> he might be a sufferer. We felt strongly that 7.9 inches was exactly the right display size. Well, you think that they kept comparing it to iPad 2, to so you're assuming that iPad 2 is gone. This so is going to be 199. you can still pick it up and easily use it with one hand. We have continued to develop our unibody process there are essentially two parts to the enclosure the glass and the aluminium and that Alum junction aluminium. Aluminium. Where the two not parts aluminum come together <laughs> aluminium is incredibly important the diamond cut chamfer meets i mean this is interesting i'm very curious on the pricing right now i'm very very curious 
And, and it's not widescreen, it's 4 by 3 Ugh, terrible. But that's why they have that advantage, and they're talking about that headroom with the device. It's bigger, and it's 4x3, so you're going to get more headroom. We now essentially wrap the iPad Mini in a single, simple colored material. The biggest challenge that we faced was incorporating all of these great features in a much smaller and lighter device. In order to do this, every part had to be custom designed, starting with the display. The glass on the front and back are only 0.2 millimeters. I mean, they, they really go technical with this, the whole how, why it's thinner and how it's thinner. Um, again, it's really going to come down to price for this device because you're comparing it to a $199 Android tablet, which is sold as an entry level into that tablet market. And if you're comparing it to that, you have to have a competitive price point. Agree, possibly yeah. 249 i mean that that's as that's the most competitive they could possibly get with this device but i don't know I think the kindle fire is around 249 is the it? kindle fire is 249 and so i can see them justifying it at 249 299 but you're a hundred dollars more than the device that you just compared it to and you said how much better it is and if it's anywhere in the but threes if it's better then that means you can you can you can afford to have a at a higher cost. I guess. I guess that's their argument, right? Then why compare it, compare it to that? It's like comparing the MacBook Pro to, you know, a, a 399 Acer laptop and talk about how great your computer is. Well, it's you amazing. can get a Dodge Dart or a like Ferrari. SLR. Which would you rather have? All right, here we go. So the announcement, we're back. And let's see what the price point will be. He says 189 people are going to hoot power. The iPad mini is every inch an iPad. They're going to set that building on fire. It comes with a, <laughs> a great line of accessories, including these optional smart covers that come in blue, green, pink, light gray, dark gray, and even a great... Uh, gray I don't think well. you guys are going to be happy with the price. They're smart, so they work with the software. Oh, no. Don't say it yet. Let them, let them say it. they're to use in every angle. And they really complement this incredible new iPad mini. The iPad mini starts with a full 16 gigabytes of memory. And the Wi-Fi configuration will be priced at 329 Oh. Why are they even clapping that? I don't know. Course, that is the lowest price yet for an iPad, helping us to reach even more customers. And you just compared so it to $199. iPad, iPad mini it starts at So you're $129, 100 $129 more than that. iPad fourth generation with a retina display at 499 Well, I think everybody knew it was going to be more than 300 configurations of memory you can choose from, so there those all are, the Wi-Fi configurations. Under 300 it would have been nice, but... configurations, so there's something in a wide range of price for everyone in each the most amazing, best iPad or tablet device that anyone anyone has offered. Now, if you want to get your hands on one, how are you going to do 459 that? 459 for the uh, Wi-Fi and cellular the version. Jeez. Jeez. Be able to start to pre-order this Friday on October 26th. So wait a second, the new iPad is Wow, you know, the by the way, that's the release date for the Surface. On November 2nd. Did you notice that? New iPad is gone. It just says iPad. Here they are. And then about oh two weeks God. later, Look at that we'll start price. to ship the cellular version. First in the US, and then gradually around the world. Of course, like all of our products, the team works very hard to make sure there's this environmentally friendly iPad mini in the fourth generation iPad, arsenic-free display glass, mercury-free display, BFR-free, PVC-free, and of course, highly recyclable. Of course. So this is an amazing new addition to our iPad family. And we're going to be so excited to tell customers about it if they don't already know how exciting it is right now, streaming this live on the internet. And we're going to add a TV, a TV ad that we're going to run and introduce customers to it in a really simple and fun way. I'd love to run that for you now. I think they lost, they failed. How did they fail? So wait a second, because well, the failure of the pricing, because you could get an iPod Touch now, weren't we talking about that for $30 cheaper? Yes. So then I don't, Understand. Turn this off. <laughs> it's horrible. That was a great that, is, that does not make me want to get an iPad mini. Why are you clapping at that? 
I just I just went to the restroom. What are they clapping at? They just played yeah. Heart oh. and Soul. And Why? They played an ad where all they did was play a piano on it. Why? Thanks to the ad team for that. They just really came up with the most creative way to introduce an iPad Mini to everyone who already knows how great iPad is. I think I think the ether is kicked into that room. Mini. Let me turn it back to Tim. Come on, put the ether on a little bit more. So, <laughs> why would you get an iPod Touch now for thirty dollars more? Yeah, than exactly. Mini? It's very cool. But see, isn't that this is what I'm talking about? The pricing is weird, where you can get an iPod Touch. That has a four-inch screen for two ninety-nine. Yeah, right. but then, but the, I mean, yeah, it's got a Retina display, but I don't think that most people are really going to generally notice a difference between the two screens, especially when you're looking at a four-inch screen versus a seven-point-nine-inch screen. I don't think the average consumer cares. Let's see. In what iOS it? six, the latest versions of our desktop and mobile operating systems with hundreds of new features, including great new features that help Macs and iOS devices work seamlessly together. We launched two new incredible iPods, a completely redesigned Nano and an amazingly thin fifth generation iPod Touch. We launched the unbelievable new iPhone. I'd have to say my favorite thing the of the announcement is probably the iMac. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the most impressive. Display. Yeah. We refreshed our entire lineup of notebooks and reinvented the Pro Notebook. There was a lot of anticipation for an iPad Mini. Though. MacBook Pro with Retina display. I mean, look at how long we've been talking about it on all the news shows for the past an month. Unbelievably thin and unbelievably gorgeous new iPad. You practically could not go a week Earlier without year, iPad Mini rumors. We announced the third generation. I just don't get why not do. IPad I guess they could be too tiny now because it's the exact and same. And today we replaced it with a faster generate with a faster. I mean, I, I'm, I don't know what to make of it. And added the iPad Mini to the iPad. You gonna get one? No, no, no. Yes, it has. No, been I'm not. A incredible year. I may, I may get a new all iPad, but calls. who knows? I don't, I don't think so. And all of the applications. I'm definitely gonna services. just get a, a Retina MacBook Pro. This has been a truly prolific year of innovation for Apple. We hope that you love these. One more thing. As much as we loved creating them, you didn't create anything. I personally anything. like to thank all of the teams at Apple Harsh. that have worked so hard to create everything you've seen today and everything across the year. They dedicate a huge part of their lives to making the best products on earth. Who's that guy who claps to make everyone else clap? Sarah, one more thing. Please. I think there's supposed to be a new These iTunes. These are the most talented huh. and most innovative people. I'm surprised they didn't know. talk about iTunes it is yet. It's a privilege and an inspiration for me to be able to work with them. I want to thank everyone for coming. We've got a hands-on area with all of the new products Perfect. you've seen today. It's upstairs. I invite you all to go get your hands on them. They're fantastic. Thank you for joining us. And that's it. So uh, there you have it. Uh, you have a whole slew of announcements from Apple. The site is updated. The site is updated. So uh, to kind of step back and to, to kind of talk about what was announced, we got a 13-inch Retina displayed MacBook Pro. We also got a brand new iMac, which is a lot thinner than the previous version. By the way, the Apple stock is down <laughs> a lot, down uh, eight and a half uh, wow. points right now in the market during the announcement. Uh, iPad Mini was also announced, three twenty nine to five twenty nine pricing. Pre order starts October twenty sixth. We also saw a new fourth generation iPad. Not a lot of information on this. Uh, faster performance from the Apple A6X, a new, a next generation ISP, dual CPU performance from an A5X. I don't know what that means. Why an A5X? Very because interesting. It's cheaper. No, it says A6X and an A5X. Oh, you can pick. I don't know. 
Uh, LTE supported and 2x fast, two times faster um, Wi-Fi. That's interesting. That might be a typo on the site. Oh yeah, you're right. Twice as fast as the pre. Do you see that? Yeah, that's right. That's not right. Uh, let's see. Let me go to the store and let me see the. Oh, the, the store's still, still down. down though. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of this, uh, John? Uh, well, what do you want me to cover first? Uh, just the iPad Mini stuff. Just or? the overall announcement. The overall, well, you know, it was interesting that they announced a fourth gen iPad. I think that's really interesting that they did that. And it, you could be right that it is just so that they could add the lightning connector to it. But I think it might be just a little bit more than that. It, but the fact that they just announced an iPad, the, I, the iPad third generation. In March, April. Six months ago. Yeah. yeah. I think that's crazy that they would even do this. I think the purpose of it is obviously to take uh, take those older ones off the shelf. Now, uh, they kept discussing the iPad 2. Are they going to remove the iPad 2 from the market and just put a third generation no. iPad? No. I, I think it's just going to be... They're totally... Well, I think they are because I think in one of the uh, slides that they showed, they still were talking about the iPad 2. Yeah, they talk about the iPad Mini with all the price, and they talk about the iPad 2 with all the price, and then they talk about the iPad with Retina Display. So that's, those are your, your, your three choices here. You have the iPad Mini, which is the smaller version. It doesn't have Retina Display. And then you have the fuller-sized iPad 2, which also doesn't have Retina. But if you do want Retina, well, then you're going to have to go with the 4th Gen No, 3rd Gen uh, has iPad. Retina. IPad, uh, uh, yeah, true. But wh what are they going to do with sure. the third generation they don't sell now? that anymore. I mean, they're just totally taking it off That's the shelf. That's what it looks like because they don't even talk about the third gen iPad. They talk about the iPad mini, the iPad 2, and the iPad with Retina display. And now the iPad 2 is two generations behind, but it's still at the $399 price point. How is that justifiable? They're getting a little wacky with this price point, and I honestly feel that having that iPod Touch at $299 screwed up the entire pricing structure. I agree. For twenty bucks more, forty bucks. What is it? Twenty bucks more, twenty nine dollars more. You're gonna get a tablet. Uh, it's not Retina, but a lot of people will probably opt in for that if they have the choice. It's more of a functioning device. Then the third generation apparently has been wiped off the map, does not exist anymore. So now it's the fourth gen new iPad. Second gen is still up on on the website. That's a little weird, guys. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on either. It's like way too much information to just swallow. I think, I think they did a good job with the the computer part. I thought the of course they needed that 13 inch MacBook MacBook Pro. We got a new iMac and we got a new Mac Mini. And then it seems like between the iPod Touch to all the way to this new iPad, it's just like, okay, well we set the price here for these iPods, so we have to be be able to figure out where these new Mini and then the iPod Two comes in. I'm actually, I really like the um, Apple lives off high profit margins. They, I mean, listen, that that's the whole thing, right? I mean, we all know what we're getting ourselves into, but I, I think the problem is that the pricing structure is whacked out, in my opinion. It's not. Yeah. It, it, there's something off about it. Uh, the biggest surprise to me was Someone's that. Someone's always been off with Apple's pricing, in my opinion. So, yeah, um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to make of it. I don't know I, what I'll to tell make. you I just don't I, get the whole. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Call him. Go ahead. No, you. No, you. Okay. I just don't. Uh, I just don't get the like you were talking during the whole thing. Is that the whole comparis comparing it to the the Nexus Seven is just ridiculous. Yeah. You cannot compare a three twenty nine to a oh, hundred ninety nine. Um, eight out of ten times, someone's going to get the one ninety nine version. I, I but think they'll the just take is, it back and say, "Well, this isn't an iPad. I thought this was an iPad." And then they'll sue them. Yeah, I, I mean, they're getting a little... It, it's the market... They're making the same mistake they made in the 90s where they have a thousand versions of the same product. Uh, now you have the the third gen, the second gen, the fourth gen, uh, possibly all still on the market. Who knows? But maybe they'll replace the third gen into that secondary pricing structure, which I don't think they will. Um, I, I think overall, the event was a home run as far as if you compare it to the iPhone 5 event that they had a couple months ago. A month and a half ago. I agree. I think that event totally was botched. I think a lot of people were anticipating this device to be unveiled at least or teased. They did not get that. Uh, and they spent a whole lot of time on iTunes. I think this one was a lot tighter. They went right yes. through the products and they said, here you go. You're done. And it was an hour long. 
Do you think just throwing all these products out there is really that they're scared about what's about to happen in the Microsoft Windows world? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, this is fascinating because when Friday is the release date for the Surface, along with a, a onslaught of Microsoft Windows 8 and Windows RT devices. This is a direct shot at them. Wow. I mean, this is really, and pre-orders begin on the 26th, the same day as the release for the Surface. This is a direct shot at them. And also on Friday, I believe, Google is having an announcement on their next tablet. They're going to announce uh, the next Nexus phone and I believe a Samsung tablet. I, I, you know, this is very, this is a very, listen, I don't want to This is going to be a great time for the holiday season, yeah. I'll tell you that. So many <laughs> devices to buy. Uh, again, if you're just tuning in, you're watching the GFK Network's coverage of the Apple announcement. It shouldn't even be an iPad mini announcement. It's just an Apple product line announcement. They've announced new MacBook Pros. They've announced new iMacs. They've announced new Mac Minis, and uh, they announced a Mac, uh, an, an iPad Mini, and a, along with a fourth generation iPad, an updated version of the third gen. But not many, not too many updates. I mean, just minor, minor updates. Uh, updated front-facing camera. They really didn't go into. It. They really didn't go into the fourth gen at all. What, what's weird? If you go to the site now and go to iPad and do compare iPads, they have iPad Mini, iPad Two, and iPad. So yeah, the third, the the new iPad is completely phased out. Now. Yeah, and this was just, and, and I'm telling you what this was. This was just a way for them to put the 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 lightning bolt port on this device. Well, then you know, in a way, it's almost like why didn't they wait in the six months until now to release a new iPad? Because we've seen that in the past, where you know, like when they went from the three G to three GS to four. They waited a little bit longer. They waited 18 months instead of 12. Yeah, I don't know. Ooh, you know what else is interesting? The iPad Mini has Siri. iPad 2 does not. It's weird. I don't get it. <laughs> so it sounds like a whole bunch of confusion. I don't know. I'm getting messages from people asking me if they should buy it now. I told, I told him no. Just tell him yes. No. I, I mean, also, we saw that Fusion Drive uh, stuff. And uh, what do you make of the Fusion Drive? I like the logo. You like the logo. That's about it. I'm in. You're in. <laughs> no, done I deal. mean, th this type of computing is no, no different for any uh, Windows PC user. It's just that everyone's doing that now. They're getting... They're getting that flash drive that's enough to have your OS and run your everyday apps, and yeah. then you're storing all your data on a hard drive. Yeah. So, same thing. Like you said, the hybrid. Yeah, it's a hybrid device. I mean, that's all it is. I mean, that's all it is to me. Uh, very interesting stuff, though, guys. Uh, so are you buying anything today, Calm? Yeah, I think I'm going to go out, and I'm actually going to get a product that it's already been released. I'm going to go pick up the 15-inch uh, MacBook uh, Retina, MacBook Pro Retina. I can't even pronounce They have so many different names now. You're going to get the MacBook Retina. Yes. MacBook 15 inch. Pro. Not, why not the 13? Because I don't know. The main reason is because when you look at the resolutions, I like that the 15 inch has that bigger resolution. Uh, okay. Yeah. And plus I have in front of me right here is the, I, the well, now the old iMac, but which was the current one. I'm going to use that as my display with it. So, I mean, I could get the 13 inch, but. So let me ask John, uh, Suncast, how about you? Are you interested in anything that was announced today? You know, I'm kind of interested in iPad mini just from the fact that it's a little bit cheaper than the new iPad. So in that sense, because my mom was actually looking at an iPad earlier this year, and ultimately it kind of came down to, well, it's kind of really expensive for the Wi-Fi and cellular version. Well, with the iPad mini being about $100 less, it's a little bit more easy to swallow getting an iPad mini with Wi-Fi and cellular. So yeah. that's a little bit more interesting to me. Yeah, uh, I'm probably, you? I don't know. You know, I, I like the 13 inch, but I don't like the price point of it. Right. Um, I'm fine with my MacBook Pro right now. It's about a year and it's about a, a year old. Um, the, the fourth gen device 
It's it, it's it, listen. It all comes down to when will they release a fifth gen device? Now, right? Are they just trying to get everything on the same product line? I mean, everything across the board be the same generation, so they do it at the same time. I mean, I don't know. Uh, they, they're kind of escalating the product line by by calling it a fourth generation when really they're just upgrading some components on the third gen. Or possibly what they're looking to do is the fifth gen is going to become a widescreen device and they're going to go with a bigger display. So now you'll probably have all Retina across the board. They'll probably add Retina next year to the Mini and have uh, the, the the old iPad. The new iPad will be a widescreen Retina display and you'll have the, the Mini. You'll have the Mini, the middle, and the big. I don't know. It's getting a little. It's getting a little weird with their. With it's a lot of devices. It's a rather than having one thing to pick, you have. To I pick. think a lot of that has to do with them wanting to have something at every uh, entry point and every price point where I guess. you know somebody wants three twenty nine, somebody wants four twenty nine, somebody wants five twenty nine, somebody wants six twenty nine. Uh, there's a price point for almost everybody there in a way. Yeah, I mean there yeah. is. That's the thing. Well, it was fun, guys. Uh, yeah. I think we should wrap it up. Uh, go to our website, guysfromqueens.com. If you miss any portion of this show, of course, you can catch it archived on our website at gfknetwork.com. You can follow me on Twitter, at Andrew Zarian. Uh, we're going to be back in about an hour and a half with What the Tech with Paul Therod. And I know Paul's going to have a lot to say about this. We're going to be talking about the Surface, uh, Windows 8 coming up at the end of the week. So a lot to get to in about an hour and a half. We're going to be back broadcasting live. Uh, Suncast, any plugs? What do you have to promote? Uh, you can check out my website, suncast.com, S-U-N-K-A-S-T, and you can also follow me on Twitter, at Suncast. Excellent. And uh, Colm does yes. a phenomenal show, <laughs> T4 Show, with Michael Manna. Uh, T4Show.com is the website. You can also follow Colm on Twitter, at Colmination. You can follow Michael Manna on Twitter also, at Michael Manna, right? That's correct. Yeah, we'd, uh, we're doing our shows on Wednesdays, so follow us on Twitter to find out the time, and uh, we'll most likely, also, you can find me here on GFQ. Yeah. Uh, and that's it, guys. We'll see you all uh, next time, and I'll see you, uh, most of you, in about an hour. Uh, take care and brush your hair. I just want to let everybody know. Good night, everybody.